we're back now with the chairman of the Republican Party who is with us live in the studio, Michael Steele. It's Mr. good to Steele, be with you, Bob. Thank you very much for coming. Short question, your reaction. Well, I, I, again, I thought the president uh, said uh, a lot without really saying anything. There was nothing new here. There was nothing uh, that will move the needle, if you will, on this debate. The American people will walk away from this weekend series of uh, interviews, uh, I think tomorrow night with... Uh, uh, Letterman or whatever, and, and they'll say, say to themselves, so what's changed? And this is not, I think, very helpful to the president right now. He's got to get the American people behind him. And when he says stuff like he can do, if you laid out the litany of things that, you know, he wants to get accomplished, and he says, yeah, we can still do all of that without raising taxes, without increase, creating the deficit or increasing it. Uh, it's just not believable. And I think uh, uh, it may have been nice to do the interviews, but I don't think it advanced the debate on health care that much. So you think he is going to raise taxes? He has to. Then how else do you pay for it? I mean, the, you know, all this cutting efficiencies, and, I mean, creating efficiencies and cutting costs within various programs. I mean, Washington has been saying that for generations. I mean, that's just not the business of government. It doesn't do that. Uh, and I don't think that's going to, particularly with something as mammoth as health care, that you're going to be able to go in and create a trillion dollars worth of savings <laughs> in, in, in the health care system. So those dollars are have to come from someplace, uh, whether you're talking the Baucus bill, whether you're talking the House bill, H.R. 3200, or whatever bill the administration finally settles on, taxes are going to go up for the middle class because they have to. That's the only way you pay for this. Do you think, Mr. Steele, it's just good politics for Republicans to just be against this? Well, we're not against it. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question because we're not against this. We are for health care reform. We are for promoting a health care system that brings in uh, those who are currently without health care. But we want to do it in a step-by-step, common-sense approach that's bottom-up, that's patient-doctor-centered, that touches on portability, tort reform, creating small business pools. All these things, I don't need to overhaul the entire system to do the three things I just uh, said. This administration is, is bent on reforming the entire system, a comprehensive overhaul. It is impossible to do without all those other pieces that he claims won't be touched, like tax increases on the middle class, will be touched. Uh, it seems that you and the president are on the same page on one thing, and that is, is racism fueling this meanness we're seeing in this debate? He says no. He says his people are frustrated about, they yeah. think he's trying to enlarge the government. I think the president's absolutely right, and I was very, very uh, happy to hear the administration come out and make that stance uh, with me, uh, that in this instance, uh, what we heard, the, the eruption in the House was inappropriate, it was wrong, uh, but it was not racism. Let me ask you about something that doesn't have to do with uh, this interview. The mm -hmm. New York Times reports this morning that the president sent word through an intermediary to the Democratic governor up there, David Patterson, asking him to withdraw as a candidate uh, for governor next year uh, because they think he's so far down that it's just gonna drag down the party. I, I found that to be stunning, uh, that the White House would send word to one of only two black governors in the country uh, not to run for re-election. And it uh, just raised a curious point for me. I think Patterson, Governor Patterson's numbers are about the same as Governor Corzine's numbers, uh, and yet the president was with Governor Corzine, and I don't know if there's been a request made of Governor Corzine to step down in New Jersey. Uh, so I, I just find it to be stunning and also rather bold. Well, you don't uh, think he's asked him not to run because he's black. Well, I don't think that, but I just find, I mean, look, you, you have so few, and you're looking, if you're saying it's the numbers, then why isn't there a call for those other uh, Democrat governors who have low numbers who are in trouble as well? Uh, so I just think that it's, it's just a curiosity for me uh, that uh, the president would inject or the White House would inject itself into that uh, debate when it's, I don't think it's appropriate nor necessary, because it's a primary. If he's going to be challenged, he'll be challenged, and he'll survive it or not survive it. Uh, how do you think it'll play in the African-American community? That'll be very interesting to see uh, what the response from black leadership around the country will be by the president uh, calling for uh, uh, Governor Patterson to step down or, or not run for re-election. Very curious. I'd, I'd be waiting to hear the responses. All right. Mr. Steele, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.